In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a emulator front end launcher called Retrobat. This software automatically downloads, installs, and configures emulators when needed. It uses Emulation Station with RetroArch and other emulators to help set up everything for you. You just have to add ROMs and Retrobat consolidates everything into one nice looking front end. Also, Retrobat is portable so you can set it up on an external drive. I will be using an external SSD for this setup. Okay, let's head on over to retrobat.org. I will leave the link to this page in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click on download Retrobat. Then click right here, download now. Click on download now. Now to use Retrobat is free, but if you want to leave them a donation, then you can, but we're gonna click on no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And as the recording of this video, the latest version of this emulator is 7.0.0. .0. Go ahead and click on download. Now, if you get this pop-up saying your download can't be downloaded, go ahead and click on see more, come over to the three dots, select keep and keep anyway. Here's that retro bat setup file on my desktop, but remember we're gonna be setting this up on an external SSD, which is this drive over here. So I'm just gonna drag the setup file onto that drive. Now on that drive, I have a folder containing some PlayStation 2 games, a folder containing some Super Nintendo games, and a folder containing a PS2 BIOS. So this way I can show you how to import games that don't require a BIOS, such as Super Nintendo, and games that do require a BIOS, such as PlayStation 2 games. Now let's go ahead and open our RetroBat setup. Select your language. Next. Go ahead and accept the agreement next next go ahead and locate wherever you want retrobat to be installed so i'm gonna hit browse and my external ssd is this s drive okay next if you're not sure if you have direct x9 and visual c installed on your pc then go ahead and leave both of these checked if you already have them installed it's still fine you can leave them checked next if you want a desktop shortcut, go ahead and leave this checked. Next, and install. You can't see my screen because my user account control came up. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Hit yes. Now it's gonna tell you to complete the installation, you must restart your computer. Go ahead and leave yes checked and finish. Now when your PC loads back up, go ahead and open two separate folders and you want to go to this PC on both folders. And the reason I'm using two separate folders is because my ROMs are installed on the same drive as Retrobat, which will be this drive here. So I'm going to open the S drive on both of these folders. Now in one of these folders, it could be either one. You want to open that Retrobat folder. And the first thing we're going to do is install our PS2 BIOS file. And inside of that Retrobat folder, you will find a folder called BIOS. And inside of that folder, you will find a bunch of emulators. You want to find the emulator you want to install a BIOS for. In my case, it's going to be PCSX2, the PlayStation 2 emulator. Select BIOS. And now I'm going to go over here to this folder, open PS2 BIOS. I'm going to highlight every file that's in here and drag it over here into this folder. And let's go back. And inside of that Retrobat folder, if you scroll down, you will see a folder called ROMs. And in here, you will find a bunch of systems. So what we wanna do is find PlayStation 2 right here. And let's go back in this folder over here and I'm going to go to PlayStation 2 games and I'm going to drag all of my PS2 ROMs into this folder. Now let's go back in our Retrobat folder and we also want to find Super Nintendo right here, SNES. Let's go back in this folder over here and let's go over to Super NES and we're going to do the same thing. Drag all of my Super Nintendo games 
into this folder. Now, if we go back one more time, also inside of this folder, your retro bat folder, you will find a folder called saves. This is where you will be able to find all of your save files. Okay, we are good. Let's exit out of both of these folders. And here's my retro bat shortcut on my desktop. Let's go ahead and open it. Now, once you are in here, you can navigate using your keyboard, your mouse, or even a game controller. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here is come down here to the bottom left and click on menu, go to sound settings, and right here where it says front end music, go ahead and turn this off. Let's go back. And if using your mouse, just click somewhere outside of this box. And now if we scroll over, you will see Super Nintendo, and if we click on it, you will see all of our games. And here is PlayStation 2. Now, as you see, my PlayStation 2, as well as my Super Nintendo games do not have cover art. So let's get some. Let's go back to the main menu. And from here, let's go back into menu. You wanna go to scraper. Make sure scrape from is on screen scraper and then go to scraper settings. And from here, you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom where you will see account, username, and password. So you wanna come over to this site here called screamscraper.fr. I will have the link in the description below. And you wanna create a free account. Up here in the top right, click on registration. And then down here, go ahead and come up with a nickname, password, and enter your email. Once you have that account created, come back over to Retrobat and go ahead and log in. Once you are logged in, go back and then hit scrape now. And in the top right of your screen, you should see a notification showing how many games and what games are getting images and media downloaded for. Go up to game settings and update game list. Now, if we go back into PlayStation 2, we have some cover art. And as you see, once you click on a game, you will get some gameplay. And if we go back over to Super Nintendo, Now, one last thing I want to show you here before we go into the games is come back down to menu, go to updates and downloads and go to themes. And in here, you will find multiple themes to change the entire look of Retrobat. I'm gonna download a few. I'll do this one here, Canvas, Install, and I'll do this one here, Comic Scrap. Now let's go back, go up to User Interface Settings, select Theme Set, and there are my two themes, Canvas and Comic Scrap. We'll check out this one first. Just click on it, back, and as you see, Retrobat has now changed his theme. And if we scroll through, you can see what this looks like. If we go back into our user interface settings, and this time we're gonna change the theme to Canvas back. And this is what Canvas looks like. It's a lot cleaner. So yeah, try out all of the different themes and see what you like. Now let's go ahead and load up a game. And you will notice that your controller will work with no setup required. Also, you will notice that you have borders on the side. Now, these borders do look cool on these retro games, but let's say you wanna get rid of these borders. So what you wanna do is press and hold the select button and then press start. That will bring you back to the main menu. And then you wanna come down here and click on menu. Select game settings, scroll all the way to the bottom 
and select per system advanced configuration, Super Nintendo, and here we have a few options we can play around with. Now leaving emulator on auto, Retrobat will decide what emulator to use. Now for Super Nintendo, it really doesn't matter to me, but if you wanna scroll through these, you can check out the options they have available. Now if you wanna turn off the borders and decorations, then right here where it says shader set, we'll select none, decorations, we'll select none, if you want to change your game's aspect ratio, then you can do that here. And you have a few other options to check out. Let's go back. And let's load the game back up. And as you notice, this time we have no borders. Now for PlayStation 2, we'll go ahead and load up a game. Now it's gonna tell you that PCSX2 is not installed. Go ahead and hit yes for install now. And your game should load up. And once again, your controller will work with no setup required. And also once again, you will have borders on the side. Now. We want to get rid of these borders with PCSX2 as well, as well as upscale. So we're going to go back to the main menu, press and hold select, and then press start. We're going to go down to menu. We're going back into game settings. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Per system advanced configuration, PlayStation 2. Now we know we have PCSX2 installed now, so we can go ahead and make that our main emulator. For the shader set, we're gonna select no. Decorations, none. I'm gonna change the aspect ratio. Now this is up to you, but I prefer to play my PS2 games in a 16 to nine aspect ratio so that I can enjoy them full screen. Internal resolution. Now, if you have a pretty decent PC with a graphics card as well as a 1440p or 4K monitor, then you can crank that up. My monitor's resolution is 1440p, so I'm going up to 1440p. And I'm gonna come down to visual rendering. And I'm gonna crank up the anisotropic filtering to eight times. This will help smooth out some textures in game. And now go ahead and click outside of this menu and we can go ahead and load the game up again. And as you see, our bezels are gone. And once we get into game, you will see that we are at a higher resolution. And here is a picture showing you all of Retrobat hotkeys. This picture is from Retro Game Corps. Just remember, always press and hold the hotkey button, which will be the select button, before pressing any of the other buttons. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.